It's Master Chef. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. Yes, I do love a competition. I really do believe that I can win it. This is one tough competition. If I didn't think I could win, I wouldn't be here. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. In this one-hour episode, these six contestants will all compete for the last remaining quarter-final place. The winner will then be up against three other exceptional heat winners. Our quarter-finalist is Matt. Sharon. Anna. Welcome. But first, it's the quick elimination test. This competition is getting so tough we need great food right now at this level. I want to see a champion today. I want somebody who really cooks beautifully and loves what they do. This bit for us is very exciting because we actually get to identify who are the good cooks. You've got 50 minutes. Let's cook. The contestants have to invent and cook a dish from any of today's ingredients, which include red snapper, goat's cheese, butternut squash, risotto rice, pancetta, beetroot, chili, dill, and blueberries. Stephanie, Master Chef. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh a lot when I'm nervous. Why are you here on MasterChef? Because I love food. Just grab things out of the cupboard and just try and um, make something from them. <laughs> I'm full of passion <laughs> and drive. <laughs> Experimental cook Stephanie likes her food to make an impression. My food just stand out because it's unique, but it usually comes out OK at the end. <laughs> Engineer John wants to make his cooking dream a reality. My ultimate food dream would be to open a country pub. To do that would be, would be absolutely fantastic. My heart says to me, I need to be a chef. Do you have a definitive style? It's comfort food. If I cook something and it makes people happy, then that makes me happy. Ladies and gentlemen, you have had 20 minutes. 20 minutes gone. Mum of three, Gillian, wants to take her love of food to the next level. I want to win MasterChef. I've got to a point in my life where I want to do something more inspiring. I love creating, I love cooking. What's your job right now? I'm a financial director. And you, you want to pack that in and have a career cooking? Yeah. I would love to have some sort of cafe, deli. Just got to really concentrate and put everything into it. relatively new to cooking and that's why I'm enthusiastic about the way I do cook. Novice cook Gary hopes his passion will make up for what he lacks in experience. Gary, you haven't been cooking for a very long time, have you? I've only been cooking for about four years and my wife, she sort of can inspire me quite a lot. And you're pretty sure you're good enough, Gary? I think I am. In fact, I, I, I know I am. We've got just 15 minutes left. 15 minutes. Tell us about the food that you love. Um, I love Italian food, I love Indian food, and I like English food. And you can take flavours from each of those three areas and usually come up with something different and unique. I can't think how. You're going to have to have a very good palate. I deem myself to be very good. 24-year-old Sukhvinda is ready to pursue his flair for fusion food. My food dream would be to have my own restaurant with a couple of Michelin stars. I'd work hard for it. I really want this and I would really want to do it. New 
ingredients really excite me. I love going to a, a restaurant and seeing something on the menu that I haven't tried before. I'll try anything once. Aussie investment banker Belinda takes an inventive approach to cooking. Belinda, what are you doing? Sushi rice flavoured with lemon, blueberry and beetroot sort of fruit compote to go with it and I'm doing the snapper. Wow. Yeah, yeah you really are antipodean, aren't you? <laughs> All around you are Europeans just cooking quite happily and you want to put beetroot, blueberries, fish and rice. Yeah. Belinda, welcome to England. Thank you. <laughs> That's all you've got is five. All done, all said. Step away from your bench. Time is up. Will Gillian's dish of Asian-style red snapper on butternut squash risotto with salad prove she's got what it takes? Resting a piece of fish or a piece of meat on top of risotto just doesn't really work. But actually the fish is cooked quite nicely. I'm watching you cook, I think you cook. I'm loving your fish because there's citrus in there and it's finishing with chilli. That's lovely. Not a bad risotto. The two together? Ah. Can novice cook Gary show his skill with a dish of red snapper spiced with chilli and dill served with creamy potatoes and salad? Dill freshness first, then chilli heat afterwards, and quite a whack of salt, which is unusual. It seemed to me you were making it up as you went along. Your fish is overcooked. It's not delivering what it should be delivering, because I think you're trying to throw too much at it. Stephanie is pinning her hopes on a dish of pureed rice and red snapper soup. You started making risotto, Stephanie. You changed your mind, you chopped up some snapper and you pureed the risotto yes. to make rice soup. Yes. Is that wise? Um, I don't know. It's very thick. I wanted to make it thinner. It's kind of gone hard. <laughs> it scares the living daylights out of me. <laughs> it's just not right, Stephanie. No, it's not nice. Sorry, Stephanie. That's great. <laughs> I do get monuments of genius, I promise you. <laughs> Comfort food lover John has made snapper with chips and a creamy dill sauce. You've over seasoned that sauce completely, too salty. That's salt, salt, salt. Very, very strong sauce, which with the potatoes works really, really nicely. But the fish just disappears. Fusion cook Sukvinda is risking it all on a risotto of butternut squash, honey and goat's cheese. I think it's well seasoned. I think all parts are well cooked. I just don't think the combination works. It's a nicely cooked risotto, but just a risotto. Inventive cook Belinda has come up with pan-fried snapper on blueberry and beetroot compote with lemon-scented rice. I am slightly frightened by blueberry, beetroot and snapper. It'll be great. Your fish is cooked beautifully. Then you get beetroot, which comes at you like a cricket bat. <laughs> you actually made your beetroot and onion compote with blueberries quite well. It just doesn't go together, mate. Yeah. I like three things on your plate. I just hate them together. OK. Six cooks in front of us. We only want three. Off you go. We'll call you back in when we've made our mind up. Thank you. There are some talented but very unusual cooks in this room. Extraordinary combinations of flavours. 
I, I think Stephanie knows she didn't do very well today. She made a risotto and turned into soup. I don't know what made her do that, but I don't ever want to see that ever again. Stephanie goes home. Well, I really like Belinda. She had a good-looking dish. She cooked the fish really well. The blueberry and the beetroot compote was lovely. Crazy combination, but Belinda can cook. Yeah, I'm really pleased they said I could cook, actually. I think even my mum had her doubts. So there you go, mum. I did do all right. <laughs> I'm trying to understand in my mind why Gary actually cooked that fish for such a long time. He didn't need to throw all those many flavours at the fish. I don't think he knows enough about food to go any further in this competition. I agree. OK, Gillian, her combinations are absolutely wrong. The idea of the fish, the risotto, the salad on the side. But all parts were cooked pretty well. I think Gillian's one of the best three cooks in the room. I'm happy to put her through. That leaves us with John and Zukvinda. Now, that's a tough one. John, he said he wanted to cook good comfort food. The idea of coming and cooking fish and chips, great idea. But that sauce was so salty. Yes. Maybe I was a little bit safe doing what I did, um, but I stuck by my guns. Although I was opposed to Zukvinda's idea of the butternut squash and the honey and the risotto, actually, his flavours weren't bad. But if you're going to make risotto, it's got to be a really good one. Hopefully, I might be given another chance to prove what I can actually do. I just feel a bit upset about what I've done. They've both got strengths, but which one? You know the rules. Three of you are staying and three of you are going home. Gillian, congratulations, you're staying. Well done. Stephanie, Gary, sorry guys, you're leaving us. Thank you. Belinda, we're giving you another chance. Well done. Okay, so Belinda. Or John. So, Vinda, congratulations for staying with us. Sorry, John, you're leaving. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Congratulations. 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 Thank you. I'm feeling over the moon. Uh, feel brilliant. Really happy I got through. <laughs> the challenge is sort of within my grasp, and I, I can get there, hopefully. I want to win this quite a lot now. I'm a bit fired up. Well, if they thought the MasterChef kitchen was tough, wait until they experience their first professional kitchen. This is going to be a tough little competition. Are they good enough? It's day two, and the contestants arrive in London's upmarket Westminster, home to the modern European restaurant, Bank. Our three amateur cooks will be under the watchful eye of head chef Gavin Maguire. It's going to be a busy day. You can do 100 for lunch, so you're going to feel the pace. Get on with it, follow me. After two hours of prep, the 12 o'clock lunch rush begins. Let's concentrate, let's get it right, guys. Yes, chef. Yes, yes chef. chef. Gillian is cooking a smoked haddock risotto with a poached egg. I'm very nervous, it's going to be really busy, and this is a really popular dish. OK, guys, we got checks on. we got two soup starters, a risotto large. A little bit more stock. Taste your risotto. Yes, no? Cool, sure. Yeah, fine, yep. Hold on, hold on, hold on. A little bit more seasoning, a little bit more cheese. Make sure you're on it with that next time, yeah? Seasoning, you know what it should taste like. Had it risotto. Hot, bothered, confused. He wasn't happy with it, which is quite unnerving, because it was my first one. Sukhvinda is in charge of halibut with a crab and herb crust, asparagus and shellfish dressing. OK, check on after starters. Two halibut. Yes! Good. Beautiful! Careful with them. With four orders on the go, he's getting confused. How many halibut you got on order? How many you got sealed off? 
I've got two, two in the oven, two sealed off. Two there in the oven, though. They're not away, are they? No, not yet. So you don't want them in the oven, yet? Um, I put them in a bit too early. I was meant, they were meant to wait until he said away. But I think I've overheard something and put them in advance. Come on, guys, we're in the <laughs> now, yes? Let's push a bit, yes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. With the chef worried, it's up to Belinda to get the service back on track. She's cooking duck with Chinese vegetables, sesame dressing and lotus root crisps. Come on now, the halibut's going cold. Let's finish this duck, yeah? Come on, come on, a bit of pressure now, yeah? Yes, chef? Yes, chef. It is, it is pressure, but it's exciting too. Beautiful. Belinda seems to have picked it up. She's basically doing the dish now, so that's cool. With the service at its peak, can Gillian meet Gavin's high standards? So with this risotto, yeah, I want to season him right. Now spoon in, taste it. Yeah, fine. Had it risotto. Perfect, yeah. And after a shaky start, Sukvinda's got to grips with his dish. Beautiful. It's good fun. I'm enjoying it. The ducks proved the most popular choice, and with service nearly over, Belinda's in her element. One duck, how long? Just plating the duck now, Chef. How long on the fish cake? Beautiful. I'm really excited. I'm actually enjoying it more than I thought I would. It's awesome. Dead duck's perfect, Belinda, yeah? Great. After two exhausting hours, service ends. So who does Gavin think could cut it in his kitchen? Gillian, I think she was a bit flustered with it at first. I just don't know if she was maybe a bit overwhelmed by the kitchen. It's a very good restaurant. Everyone's got to work together as a team, and I just found that really difficult. Sook tended to drift a little bit, I think, maybe as we got really busy. But I think he did quite well. I've enjoyed it. I think it's a good experience. Yeah, I would change my life for it. Belinda seems to be quite focused, actually. Dishes were good that was coming up. I could hear her in service shouting how long on this so I could swim my duck. The one who seemed to take to it the best was Belinda. It's definitely a firm that I really enjoy working with food. It's really cool. Welcome back. One of you has to prove to us that you're worthy of a quarterfinal. You've got 60 minutes. Let's cook. So far, Belinda's inventive combinations have surprised the judges. Can her own two-course menu secure her victory? What are you cooking for us? Fragrant orange blossom sushi rice, a persimmon compote with lamb cutlets. My second course is um, a, a lavender cake. Do you not think you're taking a massive risk here by again presenting us uh, a combination of ingredients which are not normally put together? I'm hoping that this time my tried and tested recipe will convince you that the flavours do work together. Every nerve ending in my body and soul tells me to dislike Linda's food. But I'm quite excited by it. In the first round, Mum of Three Gillian's technical skill impressed, but she used too many ingredients. Will she win a quarter-final place with her menu of stuffed Thai squid, followed by roast chicken with lavender and honey, and an apple and celery at puree? Do you not feel today that you're cooking with lots of ingredients? I don't think I've overdone it, but I'm hoping you'll like it because it's going to taste fantastic. You're doing this for whom? Mainly for me, because it's a real personal challenge, but the family are behind me on it. We've got chicken with lavender, honey, celeriac and apple. I can't, I can't see it. I hope I'm wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, you have 20 minutes left. 
Sukhvinder just scraped through the invention test. Now it's his last chance to prove he's got what it takes with his own fusion-style menu. You promised us an amalgamation of British, Northern Indian and Italian. Are we getting that today? Well, you're getting chilli and garlic, which are predominant Indian flavours, with scallops. They're just subtle hints. And then for the main course, I'm doing uh, chicken breast stuffed with smoked mozzarella and masala sauce. Are you confident you're going to do these two dishes very, very well? Yes, hopefully. Yes, hopefully? Yes. <laughs> Good luck. I love scallops and peas, but the idea of all those flavours together... I don't know, it means the, the scallop is no longer the star, doesn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, you have just five minutes left. Come on, come on. That's it. Finished. Gillian's first dish is Thai stuffed squid with pork and prawns, followed by roast chicken flavoured with lavender and honey, served with a celeriac and apple puree. I like it because what you have done is captured the flavours of Asia. And the pork and the prawn work beautifully together. I think it's very, very good indeed. Thank you. It's citrusy sharp. It's also got a hint of chilli. Really nice flavours. Really nice flavours. From squid... What's your main course? What I get is crispy chicken, which is actually quite nice. I can't taste the lavender, um, and the sweetness of the honey has disappeared. I've got a question, why put so many ingredients if it is going to be so subtle you can't taste it? Okay. Basically, what I have here is celeriac and chicken, and I know that's not what you set out to do. Personally, I think I really did show that I can cook different things, and I can cook different things well, which may be enough. <laughs> Fusion cook Sugvinda has made spicy scallops with minted pea puree and sweet potato crisps, followed by smoked mozzarella chicken in parma ham with potatoes and masala sauce. It's mint, first of all, then it's sweet pea, then you get a hint of garlic and chilli afterwards. The scallop does tend to get a little bit lost in the middle. I love the puree, but I might as well be eating with the chicken nugget. I've got four lovely scallops on a plate and I can't taste them. Let's change the starter. Bring in your chicken. That chicken is slightly overcooked, it could be more moist. You do get the sweetness of the masala sauce, then in comes the very, very powerful smokiness of that mozzarella in between. Far too much for a moist chicken. It's quite a bizarre combination. I don't think you need to throw so many flavours at good quality ingredients. Maybe I did get it slightly wrong and emphasised on flavours rather than the main products but um, I can still adapt from it and I'm still willing to learn. Inventive cook Belinda's dish is nut-crusted lamb on persimmon compote with orange blossom rice and a dessert of almond, lavender and blackberry cake with white chocolate sauce. I like your fruit compote. The lamb does not stand up in flavour. It's not rich enough. I still think you can cook. I do think some of your combinations are mad. <laughs> it's spiced, it's deep, lovely fruit compote, but that's a pudding. That's so fruity, it needs a big lump of vanilla ice cream. <laughs> Shall we move on? One. Yes, please.
I really, really like it. Because I love the flavor of that cake with all the nuts in it. I love the sharpness of the berries that sits on top. And I actually quite like that hint of lavender. I think it's great, actually. Really, really good. It's sharp with the berries. It's smooth underneath with the chocolate. That is really, really delicious. It's so hard to know whether I've done enough to get through. If there was positive and negative for everyone. Um, but yeah, all the fingers and toes are crossed. You now have to sit outside because we've got to make a decision of who's going to go through. Thank you. That's oh. it, guys. That's it. That's done. It's hard hearing all that feedback. Today, there has been more ingredients on the three benches than I've seen in a very, very long time. All of them have culinary talent, but when you're inventive and creative like that, not every dish is going to work. Sukhvinder's starter of the scallop, the pea puree, did lose the scallop. It's a shame to lose something as beautiful as a scallop amongst all those other flavours. To take something like beautiful, moist chicken and then to stuff it with smoked cheese that is so strong is not right. It's not right. I don't think Sukhvinder is as good as the two girls. No, I agree. Sukhvinder goes home. The debate now is about Gillian and Belinda. Can we just talk quickly about Belinda? Her main course, the persimmon, the figs. OK, a great idea with dessert with a lamb chop stuck in top of it. I don't think so. Fruit and sweetness and citrus like that with that lamb is wrong. But the flavours of the citrus and the fruit and the spicing is delicious. The dessert, however, for me, was pretty wonderful. It was soft, it was moist, absolute dream in your mouth. That was gorgeous. Now that it all seems tantalisingly close. I really want this. Shall we move on to Gillian? I think the squid, lovely and soft, very, very moist, really captured the flavours of Asia. I thought it was a really, really lovely dish. But she did have some seriously big flavours that she put into that chicken. And in the end, the only flavour that came through was chicken and celeriac. But the idea of that chicken with the celeriac mash is the right idea. Having come this far, I really do want to go through now. I, I really want to win, really do. Who is it going to be? You guys know the rules. We only have one place. The person through the next round, our quarter finalist, is Belinda. Congratulations. <laughs> wow. I don't think I've ever held my breath so many times in two days. <laughs> I'm feeling disappointed, but I will continue with cooking big time. I have the ability to source a restaurant and to um, live my dream, and I will do that. I will live my dream. It feels good. It feels a little bit surreal. I can't quite believe it. The last two days have, have been a real adventure. It's been sort of surprisingly emotional. It's, yeah, it's been, been big. Belinda's place is secure for now, but in the morning she'll be back for the next daunting stage. It's 8 a.m. on quarter-final day, and these four heat winners have returned to fight for a coveted place in the semi-finals. I love this competition. I love quarter-final day because we've got four absolute stars. I think this is probably technically the most gifted bunch of cooks I have seen so far in a quarter-final. I've been really gobsmacked that I've gotten this far. It means a hell of a lot. I will be playing to win. I'm going to grab it with both hands. I'm really chuffed I've got to this stage. I'm a lot closer to my dream. I really hadn't anticipated feeling this emotional about a competition. I'm willing to stick my neck out here. I reckon the winner of this quarterfinal could well be the winner of MasterChef. These are quality, quality cooks. 
first up, it's 27-year-old Aussie banker Belinda. In her heat, she impressed with an inventive blackberry almond and lavender cake. It's sharp with the berries. It's smooth underneath with the chocolate. That is really, really delicious. But not all her experiments went down so well. I do think some of your combinations are mad. <laughs> Belinda is undoubtedly one of the most knowledgeable and technically gifted cooks I have seen in a long, long time. The girl is experimental, but when she gets it right, she gets it absolutely right. I'm really committed to following this passion through. I would like to win. Excuse me, do you actually sell duck? Duck. Wait, wait. 28 year old science teacher Anna blew the judges away with her classic British dishes a roast pork dinner. I like that a lot. I just applaud you. Fantastic. Thank you. And a sticky toffee pud. That is just wonderful. It's about as perfect as a sticky pudding gets, Anna. Mm. She does classic British food, packed full of flavour, and presents it in a very, very modern style. What she has to do today is produce, in all her courses, the same stunning food as that majestic sticky toffee pudding I do think I can win the competition. I've got a lot to learn. But in terms of passion, no one can beat me. Hat designer Sharon showed some real talent for combining unexpected flavours. Unusual combinations, but those flavours and textures do work. Thank you. But being too creative almost proved her downfall. Melon and rabbit, how mad can you be? As a hatter? Sharon, by her own admission, is our Mad Hatter. Technically, she's very, very good. She gets lots and lots done. But she does have a desire to put strange ingredients together. Now, she has the ability to go very, very far in this competition, but not if she lets her imaginative palette run wild. I'm here on MasterChef because I think I'm a very good cook and I would like to take it further. I think I've got what it takes. Finally, it's Dorset engineer Matt, who dreams of a family-run cafe by the sea. In his heat, he wowed with a hearty rustic scallop and monkfish chowder served in a homemade soda bread. The depth of flavour is intense. I think it's a really lovely tasting dish. This is good food. Matt is one of the best cooks I have seen in a very long time. He starts to cook, the man comes alive. You see the real emotion because he actually is doing something for him and for his family. He wants this as much as anybody I've ever seen. I enjoy my job, but it doesn't have the passion that doing something you really care about can bring. I want to do something that involves my family a lot more. I want them to be part of what I do next. It is a competition looking for the best amateur. Who's good enough to make it in a professional world? Like all quarterfinals, we are going to get some seriously good food. Bundles of passion, drama, and we are going to have a few tears. I can guarantee it. It's 10 o'clock, and the contestants are back at MasterChef HQ. They're about to be tested on their food knowledge and on their commitment. After this, one of them will be sent home. This is an extremely important part of our judging decision because this is product recognition. I've got five dried fruits. Now, fruit preservation has been an important part of every single cuisine in the world for thousands of years. I've got five mollusks, foodstuffs inside a shell. This is the majestic abalone. Very, very expensive, hard to cook, but when done properly, they are delicious. Hello, Belinda. Hi. What's that? Oh, that's beautiful. That's an abalone, I think. What is this? Abalone? Uh, I don't know. Do you know what that is? I'm not sure. Hat designer Sharon gets off to a bad start. She now needs to persuade John and Greg that her creative future lies in food. I want to be as natural as possible when I go in. 
I think I want to just let it come from the heart, really. Because I'm passionate about cooking, even before MasterChef, that was where I was going. That's my direction anyway. Whether or not I win MasterChef, I am going in that direction. So, take it or leave it. Thank you. These are snails. The shell is lovely and smooth, and there is that lovely bit of brown meat in there. Delicious. Yeah. And what are they? Um, it's some kind of snail. Do you know what these are? Wilkes. And what about these babies? Wilkes. And what are these? Wilkes. Matt's ingredient knowledge has been hit and miss. Now he really needs to show that he's 100% committed to a new career in food. I'm nervous as to how I can get across my passion. I'm not good at expressing my emotions particularly, so, so it'll be interesting to see. Um, this week's made me realise just how much I want this. You know, this is not a midlife crisis thing. I've already got my Harley, so I don't need to do that again. <laughs> my family want this as well, so they're right behind me. So this is, you know, something you want to do. And that's it. Thank you very much. This is a sultana, and that is actually a dried white grape. What's that one? Sultanas. Raisins. OK. Some dried grapes, I think that they are sultanas. What about that one? Sultana. Science teacher Anna has shown a good knowledge of ingredients, but she still has to prove that cooking and not teaching is where her true passion lies. It means absolutely everything. It's all I think about. It's, it's ultimately what I want to do. And I'm prepared to change my life completely in order to get it. Tell us all about it, Anna. I'm 100% certain this is what I want to do forever, really, for my career. And I'm sat here saying, please put me through. I really, really want it. And I've sacrificed a lot as well. I'm going to be missing my sister's wedding. And I just want it really badly. Thanks, Anna. Thank you, okay, Anna. Thank you. You've got me going, yes, yeah? This is a dried cranberry. Much loved by our cousins in North America. What is that? Cranberry. Cherries. But what about that? They look like dried red cans. What's that? Dried cranberries. Belinda identified all of the ingredients. Can she now show that her passion matches her knowledge? I'm feeling nervous. It's difficult to articulate your emotions. And about something that you really believe in, it's hard. Um, at the end of the day, I love pressure, thrive under pressure. Um, I love the intensity of competition. Um, I like the demands on, you know, the demand for focus. And at the end of the day, cooking is art. Food is the, food is, you know, the palette you have to paint with. <laughs> Fine, thank you very much. Okay. And thanks for your time. Thank you. This is the bit where we've got to knock out one of our four great cooks. It's, it's going to be really tough. I've never seen such emotion from Anna. I mean, she wants this, really wants this. And she did pretty good in the product recognition. Anna, for me, is a shoe in I cannot disagree with you at all. I think she's passionate, I think she's knowledgeable, and she wants to do this competition. Let's talk about Matt. So he's nearly in tears. He says, I've got the backing of my family. It's something I really want to do. He knows where he wants to get to, he loves his food, and, you know, we've loved his food. So Matt's in and Anna's in, and I've got two I'm not quite sure about, Sharon and Belinda. Belinda actually did quite well in the product recognition. She did know her food. When she was talking to us there, I got the distinct impression that what she actually loves is the idea of competition. It wasn't actually a love of food coming out. That's my only reservation. But at least with somebody who was competitive, who was driven, they will give themselves a chance to push forward and to learn more. Can we talk about Sharon? I know that she loves cooking, but she did actually say to us, regardless of whether you guys put me through or not, I'm going to do this. She said, take it or leave it. 
that worries me. Sharon wants to change her life and work in food. She's going to do it. She's told us she's going to do it. We didn't hear this from Belinda. Who's going home? Out of those two girls? Yeah. <laughs> We've only got three places today. We have made our decision. The contestant leaving us is Sharon. I'm feeling disappointed, but it's not the end of cooking for me. I love it, and I'm going to take it further and make it my next step in life. Right, guys, you three get to cook. But of course, we only have one semi final place. So you have to grasp this opportunity with both hands. Let's cook. The three remaining contestants have an hour and 20 minutes to produce a three course meal. The standards expected at this stage are at a much higher level. 28-year-old teacher Anna is hoping to win with what she does best. She's staying true to her roots with a modern British menu. How are you feeling, Anna? I'm just happy to be here, happy to be cooking. I'm loving every minute of it. OK, and what are you going to cook for us? I'm doing pan and scallops on a sweet corn puree with crispy pancetta and the main pan-fried duck breast and a pork gravy. And then for dessert, it's rhubarb bread and butter pudding. You obviously love this style of food. Where, where does it come from? Where does the inspiration come from? My grandparents and my mum, I suppose, we've always had a garden full of fruit and vegetables. And the rhubarb, I mean, from being from Yorkshire, we've got an abundance. We can't get rid of the stuff, to be honest, so we have to do something with it. Now, let, let's just get this right. You want this competition so much that you, on the sofa not so long ago, told us you're going to miss your sister's wedding. I can guarantee, if, you, if I go through today and you put me into the semi-final, which is on my sister's wedding day, I am not going back without the trophy, because I would not do that to her. And sticking to what we love about her, she's cooking great British classics. Scallops, sweet corn. Sounds really, really delicious. She's then got a rhubarb bread and butter pudding. I haven't got an issue. As long as she gets every component bit right, that is a winning menu. 20 minutes gone, you've got one hour left. So far in the competition, Matt has shown a mastery of big, uncomplicated flavours. What are our three courses, Matt? I'm doing some smoked scallops with a bit of wild garlic. I'm doing some lamb cutlets with beetroot carrots. Uh, the lamb to be served on some smoked mash, followed by a pomegranate and raspberry mash and a little raspberry sabillon on the top. What I showed you last time was what I cook every day. This is to demonstrate a bit more bread. Uh, has getting this far made you want this competition even more? I think I can do a hell of a lot more, and hopefully you can see that and put me through. Smoked scallop with wild garlic leaf. I mean, they're seriously big flavours there. That's risky. Very, very strong indeed. Then we've got lamb, but we seem to have smoking going on again, smoked potatoes, and we've got caramelised carrots. There's three very difficult flavours to match up. You are halfway. <laughs> A 
experimental cook Belinda is going for broke with her ambitious and unusual three courses. I'm cooking a brunch menu today, actually. Why, Belinda? From a healthy perspective, it's the right place to, you know, set up your day. OK. Uh, tell us what you're cooking for us, Belinda. OK. I am starting with some rose petal blinis with a lemon creme. Then I'm doing my take on a, on a fry-up, so mushrooms, uh, a duck and bacon sausage that I'm making, and my own version of baked beans. And for dessert, for brunch, we're having um, juicy peach cakes with a raspberry glaze. You have got a huge amount of work to do. You're so driven, aren't you? I do thrive on, you know, a bit of competition and a bit of pressure, and this is a really important opportunity. This is the first time we've ever seen a master chef somebody give us three courses of a brunch menu. Rose water bellinis with a lemon cream. Yummy. Follow that on with her idea of a fry up. Extraordinary. She has given herself so much to do. I really hope she pulls it off. I so want to eat her food. You've only got five minutes. You've got 60 seconds. Step away from your benches. Your time is up. All done. Belinda's brunch menu starts with rose petal blinis, almonds, linseeds and a lemon creme. Wow. Rose petals, rose water, strong lemon, crunchy linseeds. I love the flavour, I love the texture of it. The issue I have is it's quite sweet. Ah, uh, OK. Uh, you get a hint of rose water with your bellini at the end, but it's too sweet for me. Oh, OK, really? Will her inventive fry-up get a better response? Homemade duck sausages, mushrooms, baked beans and a quail's egg topped with the spice sumac. It's fascinatingly delicious because there's all sorts of flavours in there that I did not expect to get with the idea of breakfast or brunch. Anybody who's got a mind who makes stuff like that is <clears throat> extraordinary. It's thought-provoking, like most of your food, but it actually is uh, very well flavoured. Great. Can Belinda finish on a high note with her almond, coconut and peach cake with a raspberry glaze and jam-filled raspberries? The idea of that rich coconut inside that cake, really sweet jam, very, very sweet raspberry on top. <sighs> Blow me away, Belinda. It's extraordinary. Thanks. First of all, it's like oaty and uh, toasty. And then you get sharp sweetness of the raspberry and then it comes down back into coconut. No, you and I do, uh, do see eye to eye on cakes. I love your cakes. Awesome. <laughs> I really need to know how much you want to do this competition? I had no idea how emotional it was going to be, how emotionally draining it is to do it, um, but also just the doors that might open up. Matt is hoping to get off to the perfect start with smoked scallops and wild garlic. That scallop is cooked to absolute perfection. The smokiness doesn't spoil the natural sweetness of the scallop, and there's a little hint of garlic in there as well. I love, love that. Cool. Thank you. It's really interesting, it's original, it's brave to present it like that, and it's just glorious. Will his second course of lamb with honey-glazed carrots, beetroot, smoked mashed potato and braised lettuce get a similar response? Um, this is also rather special. This is like your pallets on a carousel ride. The flavours that keep coming in and out of your mouth. Incredible. God.
that slight smoke again that sits in the back of my palate with the rich, lovely lamb that goes in there. I think it tastes fantastic. <laughs> to finish, Matt has done a raspberry and pomegranate crush with a sabayon. I think the rich flavour of the raspberry and the pomegranate with the sweetness of that topping is lovely. But it's a bit soupy. It's a bit watery. Yep. And I do feel as though I want to bite down on something and get some more texture in there. This isn't a stunning pudding. It's tailed off a little bit towards the end. Yeah. How much, Matt, honestly, do you really want this competition? This is a, a career change. This is a lifestyle change. It's something um, I want for myself. It, it, it means the world, yeah. Anna's modern British menu starts with scallops on sweet corn puree with crispy pancetta and pea shoots. I think your scallop dish looks fantastic. Really, really fantastic. Beautiful, rich, lovely, creamy corn. Crunchy, salty pancetta sitting on top of it. It is seriously, seriously delicious. Thank you. Fan tabby Oh, thank you. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's good food. Very well balanced. Scallop still remains the star of the show. That's a good dish, Anna. <laughs> Her second course is pan-fried duck with a rosemary and leek mashed potato, sautéed spinach and a port sauce. Um, I've got a little issue. And it has to do with the bottom end of your duck. It's just slightly a little bit... The flavours inside that mashed potato with the rosemary and the leeks, which are sweet, quite an intense, fairly strong port sauce. I think it's, it's a pretty good dish. <laughs> the duck is, of course, rich. And I really do like the deep, sweet richness of that sauce as well. I think you have flavour in there. Can her rhubarb bread and butter pudding with vanilla custard take her a step closer to the semi-final? Oh, baby, that rocks. You do have the sharpness of rhubarb. You've got sweetness. You've got vanilla running through that custard. That is just gooey loveliness. Good, thank mm, you. Mm. Deliciously soft, sharp rhubarb, sitting with soaked bread, crunchy underneath. It don't get much better than that. I'm loving the fact that you love it, and it is, it's me on a plate, really. I will give everything that I've got to give. I will do anything that I've got to do. I just want it so much. I, I can't put it into words, really. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you. We're going to ask you to step outside because we've got to find ourselves a semi-finalist and I can tell you right now, this ain't going to be easy. I have to say today, has been probably one of the greatest quarterfinals I've ever seen. Some of that food today, I could honestly, hand on heart, say, take it to a final, and not a problem at all. I love Anna's style of cooking. I just love it. She gave me an absolutely delightful scallop dish. Crispy shoots, salty bacon on top. It was very, very good indeed. The main course, it had richness of duck. I liked the sweet richness of her port sauce. I thought that was a professional looking, professional tasting plate of food. There were a couple of issues for me in the fact that duck wasn't cooked all the way through. But her pudding was just heavenly. Soft, vanilla, bit of sharpness of rhubarb. It was a really delicious, Moorish, wonderful dessert. I feel so close, yet so far away to my dream. And, I mean, I feel as though I'm in purgatory at the moment, waiting for the decision. Matt, incredible cook. You know, scallops and their shell, and that's all there was, with a little bit of wild garlic leaf, and I thought, you know, this better be special. They were just sensational. The smoked scallops, firm, but yet beautifully smoked, with just a touch of sweet smoke. And then the richness of the wild garlic, just sitting on top of them with a little bit of butter. I've never had a flavour experience like that.
the main course, I thought it must need a sauce. It didn't. It just ate really, really well. It was all soft and crunchy and wonderfully textured and beautifully flavoured. Crying out loud, the flavours. I mean, I put it in my mouth and I thought, oh my word. And then the dessert washed, cleaned my palate off and got rid of that smoke. But that's actually all it did. It was too wet. It just couldn't live up to the specialness of the two courses that preceded it. Emotionally, it means an awful lot to me. I want to work in food. The semi-finals would pretty much get me there, I think. In a room of extraordinary cooks, Belinda still looks extraordinary and completely original. Some of it's awe-inspiring. First course, little blinis with the rose water, the rose petals. Extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. But I found that lemon sauce far too sweet. Her fried breakfast, she made a duck sausage. She took a duck breast, she pureed it all up, wrapped it up in bacon, and then the little quail eggs sitting on top of it. It was really interesting, really flavoursome. I think it was just a real joy. I like her cake. I did like the oaty flavour going into coconut. Little raspberries filled up with jam. You know, it is really extraordinary cookery. She's making this stuff up. That's amazing. Being a semi-finalist would be an enormous deal and I really hope I get through. I think, hand on heart, that all three of them are worthy of great things, and we have to applaud them. You could take these three guys to the final right now and not be disappointed. I mean, it is phenomenal talent in this room. We are talking about a semi-final place. I tell you what, this is one serious, tough decision. We have made a decision. Our semi-finalist is Matt. Congratulations. 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 Oh, no. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Good luck. It's sad to be leaving, really. But I am already thinking, right, I need to look to the future and I need to think about how I'm going to get myself into this industry. There was a chance that this was going to be a stepping stone on the way to me achieving my goals, but I still feel like I had a really good time doing all of this and I've really enjoyed it. To be down to the last six exceeds my expectations, absolutely. I had great competitors, so I'm stunned to be through. This is about me, it's personal. That's why you see emotion. I haven't seen cooking of that sort of skill and level in this room for a very, very long time. That's memorable, very exciting food. Wow! You just Appreciate keep coming it. up with star dish after star dish after That's star just... dish, incredible. I'm not even okay. sure you know where it comes from, right? <laughs> I know I'm a good cook. I genuinely didn't think I was good enough to get through to a semi. This gets me a hell of a lot closer to where I want to be. Matt will return for the semi-finals, but next time we're back with six new contestants all battling it out for the title of MasterChef. <laughs>